What up folks, Graphics Hokey and welcome to Uploaded. So it looks like they ain't done with Attila yet. No siri Bob, they are not done yet. They are they have re they have released a few things. They are they are ready to milk this for everything they can because you know the time of Attila is coming up soon because Warhammer is coming, so they're just gonna squeeze just a little bit more out of it. I'm not I'm not sure how, how much more is gonna be after this, but this might be the last one, so let's check it out. First of all, we got some free LC. That's a free DLC for those of you who um, have a brain infection. Where they unlocked a uh, faction, the Garamantians. All you remember the Garamantians. They are the faction under the Western Roman Empire, always nipping at the heels, causing trouble, being annoying. The Garamantians are one of the desert kingdoms, like the Axum or the the Lachmids, and they all they come with those same desert kingdom uh, type traits, with the new religion and the uh, immunity to desert attrition and whatnot like that. Uh, they're nothing really special. They're they're not really a historically significant faction. All the historically significant factions have already been released. I can't think of a single one that that you would think of when you think of this era and that hasn't been released. They've all pretty much been released. So this free LC is just kind of icing on the cake, just kind of padding the waters for the next thing to come, which is a big patch and the new Slav Culture Pack DLC, which gives us three new factions. Now the patch is pretty big, it's got a whole bunch of fixes and whatnot, and you can, uh, you can look it up on the, their website to find out more details, but the one thing I was really interested in, I mean, it, it looks like they tw switched around some of the buildings. I don't quite remember, but I'm pretty sure they took away the food aspect of training grounds. Now training uh, rallies, uh, th uh, the buildings where you build units at, at least for Rome, it looks like there is, you only pay money to do it now. It doesn't cost any squalor or food, and that's perfect. Fantastic. Thank you. Just let me build my military buildings. Let me build some armies up. Thank you. Let the AI do it without having to worry about food. I want to fight lead armies and that's going to help that, thank you, that's a good thing. And another thing I noticed, the colonization, the cost for colonization has been cut in half. And that is going to be perfect, that is going to be great for the late game because by the time the late game comes, the Huns and everyone else has destroyed 70% of the map. You know, 70% of the map has been just desolated, it looks like a nuclear bomb went off. and. And then the rest of the game is just you recolonizing things. And uh, by cutting the colonization in half, I think it's going to help a lot to make other factions start to colonize, uh, recolonize these desolate areas themselves. And I, I like that a whole lot. I like the desolation mechanic, but I feel like it's being overused by the AI at this point, and I, I hope this is going to cut back on that. This is going to help cut back on that. Another thing that's going to cut back on that is this DLC faction, these new factions, they're going to have the ability to, one, they're going to be able to walk through the snow, no attrition, they're used to the snow, they're Slavs, they're like in the Russian-y Russian kind of area. They can walk through the, through the snow, no problem, they're like, they all got Santa Claus jeans. And also from the Culture Pack video on the Total War YouTube channel, they also say that it costs nothing for them to recolonize desolate areas, and it costs them half the money to uh, rebuild the buildings in those desolate areas, and that's perfect. That is going to further help to re, uh, re-establish the world after the Huns and everybody else burns it all to the ground. That's perfect. That's what we want. We want less desolation in the late game. I like the desolation mechanic. It's just too much of it, and this is going to help combat that. Now, the Slav culture pack consists of three factions. is the Antians, the Sklavinians, and the Venetians. Three Eastern Russian-y Slavic factions. They're they're they got their own special units. One of them, uh, the Antians, they come with poisoned arrow units, and that's pretty interesting. I wonder how that's gonna. Is the poison arrow actually gonna kill units as the battle goes on, or is it gonna be like a morale kind of effect, kind of like how uh, rotten corpses were in the catapults in uh, in in Medieval Two. Actually, I think that they have those in Rome too, but I'd never really used them that much. I wonder how they're going to utilize poison arrows. And the Venetians have a tier 3 axe infantry unit called Villes Chosen, and from the, the look of their stats, they look pretty sick. They look pretty beast, and it looks like it's going to be a ooh, very deadly unit on the charge with a charge bonus of 37. Got that 47 melee attack, ooh. They're going to be fun to deal with the multiplayer, I'll tell you what now. I'll, t I'll, t I'll tell you what now. And the Slovenians bring to the game a tier 2 axe infantry that's very, uh, 
very useful against cavalry with their cavalry counter tactics. And their melee attack and melee damage, a charge bonus, ooh, it's all very nice in that the use against cavalry. It's interesting that a cavalry, uh, anti-cavalry unit is not a spear unit this time, they're an axe unit, but they're called the Horse Butchers. <laughs> the Horse Butchers, so, yeah, you, you, they of course have to be good against, against cavalry. But of course their armor and melee defense are pretty shit, so... You're not gonna want to have them in prolonged combat. They're they're kind of an in and out kind of unit. They need to get in, finish what they got to do, and then just get out. And in the way they look, they all look a little different from other factions. They're the way they dress, their their beards, I guess. They it's looking a little bit different. It got a new Slavish kind of culture to it. I don't really know anything about the Slavic culture, so I'll leave that to others to decide how accurate things are or whatever. But it's cool to have new factions with new interesting abilities. I myself personally am not really interested in them. Uh, you know, I'm only really interested in, in fighting and using the uh, historically significant factions. Sometimes I'll go off book and, and play around with a not really historically significant faction, kind of like the Lachmids or Axum, just because it's something different and weird. But maybe I'll try out one of these Slavic uh, campaigns one of these days. But if you're really dying for a Slavic faction to play, well, I granted your wish for eight stonking dollars. Oh my god, eight dollars for three factions that could have been modded open. That is, that's pretty funny. It's pretty funny, CI. And yeah, I know they added a couple of new units to make it, to make it their own, but come on. Eight dollars. I recommend you just wait for a sale or maybe get it for like two dollars on G2A. But if you gotta get that Slav, gotta get that Slav action, it's out right now on Steam. And what's the future for Attila? I mean, Warhammer's out in a couple of months. I can't imagine there's gonna be much, if anything else, for for Attila. There, I guess maybe some kind of Game of the Year edition a la Augustus uh, Imperator edition, maybe? Or maybe they just won't do any of that and they'll just uh, keep it the way it is and uh, move on to Warhammer completely. Although these are probably two different teams working on this stuff, but I can't imagine they're gonna have much going on with, with Attila to try to... Uh, they want all the attention on Warhammer coming up soon, because uh, Warhammer is gonna be out in a couple of months, and that's it's gonna be a big hit for them, even though it's gonna be... it's gonna be saddled down with all their marketing bullshit with the Chaos people and the factions and all that. Oh god, day one cut DLC. But they're still gonna it's, they're still gonna be pretty successful. They're still gonna sell a lot because there's a lot of Warhammer fans who who would love something like this. And Total War fans love their Total War war game fighting, and that's that's gonna be great. That's gonna be great. I just want I want to see all these people happy. I want to see them happy. But I, I I don't see what the marketing BS. I don't. Why do you need to do that, CA? There's no need for that. Whatevs. So what do you guys think of the new uh, factions? Have you? Have these uh, four new factions been everything you've been hoping for? Are you really into the new patches? Uh, do you think it's over? Do you think the time of Attila is over? Or is, is there going to be new Attila stuff? Any more expansion packs? Any more kind of weird DLC? What do you think? I, I want more historical battles. That's what I want. And I would love an expansion DLC of Julian the Apostate. It's not too far out of the realm, out of the time period. It's about 360 something AD, I think. And uh, that would be great. There's one more expansion. Give us one more expansion pack. It could be, it could be, I know they love to do their zoomed in maps, so it could be the zoomed in map of the east because that's the big war that uh, Julian the Apostate had. He went, he went into the east and failed. Maybe you could change that. We could change the wave history. That'll be interesting. That'll be real cool. Do it, CA. I have ordered you to do it, so that means you have to do it. Yeah, yeah, you know I got that clout. <laughs> anyway, I think uh, I think that's it for me this week. I'm your graphics rogue. Later, folks. Peace.